Hey, how's it going, everybody? Happy Sunday to everybody. Wanted to go ahead and make a clear video on the GM harnesses that are sent by many manufacturers of high output alternators and exactly what it is that you need to look for when we're asking you to go ahead and convert your stock uh, GM harness over to ours if it's an older GM that uses this style harness here. Even though they look the same off of your vehicle, if we supply this harness inside of the box, you usually we're asking you to please read and don't overlook these instructions that you will need to more than likely replace the harness. So when you get an alternator from us or anybody else and it has a harness like this, we're asking you to go ahead and match up letter codes. Some have made it plug and play, but at the end of the day, there's still wire that needs to be connected and most people just overlook it. And that's what we'll cover as well for other manufacturers harnesses as well. But most of the people will send you a harness that looks just like this. We tell you to overlook the colors of the wires because the wires all change in colors based off of whoever sends you a plug harness. When we're telling you to go ahead and match up the letter codes PLFS, those codes are not on this plug. It is actually on the alternator and you'll see here where it says LFS. So when you're reading the instructions, we're asking you to match up the letter codes. It's on your alternator, not on the plug. So before you do anything, you're going to go ahead and get our alternator or the manufacturer's alternator that you got with their harness, snap it into place and mark the wires just to be safe. Get a piece of tape, little marker, put what the code is. This one's S, label this one S, F, L. You'll notice that there's a P on your older style GMs. That is more than likely it's not used hardly anymore. So we actually remove the wire. Most other companies do the same as well. You'll do the same on your stock alternator that's still on the vehicle. You're going to have your alternator is going to be sitting this way with the regulator facing up and it snaps like this. On your alternator while it's still in the car's location, your codes are on the back. Do the same thing on your car's factory harness. Label it up here with, with tape, same thing. It's going to be if it's L, if it's F, if it's S, just label it because you're eventually you're going to end up splicing your car's harness and we're going to ask you to go about two inches up. If for some re whatever reason you want to put your stock alternator back on, you want to sell the car, and you want to keep the high output alternator to use for another car or sell, then it's easily done. So remember, always label your wires before you go ahead and cut them in about two inches high. Once you go ahead and get all that done, then you're just going to do the letter code match. You're going to have my harness, you're going to have your factory's harness, and all you're going to do is just you solder them together letter code to letter code that way when it's time to connect there's only one way these connect it's got a locking tab it's got a locking tab it snaps into place you cannot swap it backwards because it's not it's not going to lock into place it's not going to fit in okay so that's an easy way to go ahead and know that you got it connected properly once you go ahead and do that, you'll probably realize that there's probably one wire that's not used. Whatever wire is not used, you can go ahead and pull that out, or you can just go ahead and tie it aside, zip lock it along with another one. It's just not used. GM, back in the day, basically they buy in bulk. So they made harnesses that had four wires, but at the end of the day, they were only using one or two wires. That's just the way GM did it. On the final set of instructions, you'll notice that you may have the remaining wire available, which is the sense wire. This is the one, as it says here on the instructions, that once you connect the L and the F, if, S, if required, together, your S is going to go on the alternator's positive post. That's the big copper lug that you're going to see on anybody's alternator. That is the alternator's positive post. This will basically be connected onto it. This is what typically turns off your battery light. There's other times where you'll want to do a, you're ordering a voltage bypass. So 
you'll get a harness with just two wires, which is basically your ignition source, 12 volt ignition source, and your 12 volt constant. Same thing there, it only snaps in one way. This is for cars that want to do a voltage bypass, bypassing their PCM. You're not going to be plugging this into your vehicle's factory harness. It's going to go solely to a 12 volt ignition source off of your fuse box. And again, the blue or the sense wire is going to go to your alternator's positive post. This is, if you get it this way, it's because we're bypassing your car's harness. Nine times out of 10. Um, like I said, if you guys have any questions, please look over the instructions that everybody supplies to you. They are very helpful. I know a lot of people are in a rush to get their units installed, but it's very critical. We try to put as much detail in there needed for you guys. But as always, if you have difficulty with an install for us, even off of another manufacturer, you can message us, you can email us. We're happy to help you out and walk you through the steps. It's a pretty simple procedure if you, like I said, digest all the information that we have provided to you or the other manufacturers have provided to you. Um, again, appreciate it. Appreciate all you guys' support. And any questions, just let us know. Thank you.